As a quail manager, or what I call as a student of quail, you should understand quail from the inside out. You need to really shrink yourself down to the dimensions of a quail. So all of a sudden now your view of the world is gonna change. You stand tall in the saddle at about six inches, you weigh six ounces. Everything loves to eat you. So you have to assume that type of identity and you'll be a much better student and you'll appreciate why a quail selects the cover that it needs. I like to refer to a song, Leonard Skinner's Free Bird, and the refrain of which goes, and this bird you cannot change. And that serves as the national anthem for those of us who are students of quail. Because we cannot change this bird. If we could change this bird, we'd make it roost up in trees. It'd be away from many of its predators. We'd have it grow in canine teeth so it could fend its, uh, defend its young. We can't do that. This bird we cannot change. So we have to change the habitat to fit the bird. That's a very important foundation for quail management. So let's examine the anatomy and the physiology of this bird and talk about why it's, it's such a neat critter and again what adaptations it has to stay afloat in a sea of predators. Now ask yourself this question, how many bobcats do I whoop? The answer is none of them. You're prey to just about everything that's out there. What about a cooper's hawk? How many of those do I stick my tongue out at? One. Are we clear? He's gonna nail you after that. So you've got great respect for your various enemies. And now let's look at the adaptations that help us stay afloat with all those enemies. The first thing, of course, you notice is that the quail is covered with feathers. Feathers serve at least three functions in a quail. One is camouflage. If you've got that mottled brown appearance down on the ground and you're perfectly still, excellent camouflage. The other one is, of course, flight. Bird can fly away in the, when the situation presents itself. The other function of feathers, and it's really the initial, the original function of feathers, is body warmth, thermoregulation. That quail's normal body temperature is 108 degrees. It can't survive at 102, it can't survive at 109. So it has to be able to thermoregulate, keep its body warm. Feathers are an excellent insulating mechanism, as you know if you've ever worn a down coat. So by look, by, those are the three functions of feathers. Let's look at the head. Are the eyes on the side of the head or are they on the front of the head? They're on the side of the head. And as a student of biology, you probably say, ah, that's an adaptation of a prey species. Greater peripheral vision. Makes it harder for something to sneak up on it. As opposed to the eyes of a coyote, a hawk, or you and I, you and I we have eyes on the front of our head indicating a predator's adaptation. What does that beak look like it was designed to do? Tear the flesh off of jackrabbits? I don't think so. It's designed for picking up seeds. So that's another adaptation for food gathering. Let's look at the feet. Are those claws, do those look like talons for grabbing a cottontail rabbit? Nope. Those are designed for scratching. A quail is really nothing but a six ounce version of the barnyard chicken. It spends a lot of its time scratching for food and so forth. So again, another adaptation. Does a quail run more than it flies? We'll look internally to answer that question. The male and the female quail, the cock and the hen, both look fairly similar, but the cock has a white face mask and a white stripe through right here, whereas in the female, this will be more of a buffy, kind of tawny yellow colored on the throat and on the face. Very easy to distinguish the, uh, the male and the female and the bob white. Blue quail are a bit more difficult. Now. If we think about other external features that are important to this quail, there's one right back here at the base of the tail. You can see just a little bit of a feather peeking out of it. If you're familiar with poultry, you know that that's called the oil gland, or the technical term is uropigial gland. And if you were to squeeze that with some forceps, you'd get a little bit of three-in-one oil out. Now ask yourself the question, why would a quail be producing oil? And the answer is to keep its feathers in good shape and to keep its feathers waterproof. Wet feathers are no insulator. A quail will reach its head back here, it'll touch that oil gland, it'll get a little bit of oil on it, and it'll preen. When you've heard of a bird preening its feathers, it's basically grooming its feathers, waterproofing them. So that's vitally important to a quail. That pretty well covers the external anatomy. Now let's venture into the internal anatomy. And for this, 
I want you to assume that we've become a western ragweed seed. That quail picks us up. Now we're going to follow the passage down through the center of a quail. In order to see the internal anatomy, of course, we have to clean the quail. So I'm going to pluck this bird, and I'll be right back with you.